Hi everyone! In this video I want to show you how I draw city backgrounds. Before I show you how to draw cityscapes like this, I will explain an easy method to draw city backgrounds using Google Maps as a reference. So here I found a place that I want to draw. The cool thing about Google Maps is that you can change the angle and zoom in however you like. You can also change your location and look at the surroundings. Honestly, I've only started using this recently and it's been a game changer and I much prefer it over using photos as references. So the first thing I do is create a rough sketch of what I want the drawing to look like. I like to use some colors to see if the shape language and composition looks good. Before I start drawing the actual scene, I create a perspective grid. Usually draw it by hand or use the perspective ruler tool in Clip Studio Paint. To do that, I make three separate layers for the X, Y, and Z axis. I like to use different colors for each of them. I draw guidelines based on the rough sketch I made, starting with the most obvious places like the ground and rooftops, and slowly fill in the blanks between them. You don't have to make each axis be affected by perspective. Here I just copy-pasted vertical lines for the y-axis. It gives the effect of looking at the picture head-on and not from below or above. The z-axis is the one creating depth and starts at the horizon line. Usually just eyeball it. Don't worry about the perspective grid not being perfect or mathematically correct. If you don't feel confident drawing the grid yourself, you can draw over a reference like a photo or a 3D model. Once the perspective grid is done, we can start drawing the background. I start by drawing basic shapes like the ground and outlines of buildings. I will later draw details onto them. I don't recommend exactly redrawing the reference. What is realistic doesn't always look good in a drawing. For example, I wanted to show both the ground and the roof, so I made the buildings a lot shorter to get the composition I desired. I really recommend using free resources such as the 3D models provided by Clip Studio Paint. For trees and plants, I like to use border effect layers. That's how I draw backgrounds using Google Maps as my reference. Next, I will explain how to create a fantasy cityscape. Before we continue the tutorial, I want to say that it's always good to go back to basics, and recently I've been trying to practice my drawing fundamentals a lot more. Finding the right resources can be a challenge, but I really enjoyed the class Drawing Backgrounds and Perspective by Ed Boychuk. It really helped me to actually understand what I'm drawing, and also develop my perspective drawing skills such as using multiple point perspective and firing vanishing points, which really help bring a scene into life. This class and many others can be accessed thanks to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, with thousands of online classes and members. It's a place to get inspired while exploring new skills, and honing the ones you already have. There are so many creative topics to discover with Skillshare, including animation, creative writing, graphic design, and many more. Finding the right resources is made easy by learning paths, which are curated sequential class collections to master a specific skill. Next to them, you have a clear direction and can easily keep track of your progress and stay motivated. I found the figure drawing learning path to be a great method to practice my fundamental anatomy skills. You can also get started on an improvement journey using Skillshare. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, and let's continue. So this is my inspiration. I recommend always having some references on hand to be able to create something detailed and at least somewhat realistic. Just like before, I start with figuring out what I want the scene to look like. I use a darker color for the foreground to see what it will look like against the background. Once I get the composition I like, I start working on the perspective grid. Here I started with choosing a vanishing point for the z-axis. I draw straight lines from the point to the edges of the canvas. First I drew it above the horizon line, but corrected it later. Because I want the scene to be looked at from below, I make the y-axis affected by perspective, with the vanishing point somewhere within the center of the drawing. The x-axis is made up of parallel horizontal lines, just slightly angled to make it more dynamic. After finishing the perspective grid, I draw a shell of the building, which I will use as a base to draw the structure. In this case, the building is composed almost entirely of balconies, but my general advice for drawing buildings is to add as many pumps out as possible to give it more dimension.
usually go straight to line art. I hold shift to draw straight lines, making the outline a bit thicker and, the, and using thinner lines for the inside. Next we are drawing the windows. Windows are the thing I draw the most when drawing buildings. I recommend drawing them receding into the wall or sticking out to make the structure more interesting. Although nowadays it's more common for a building to have the exact same window style everywhere, I like to use different designs for them. I also like to add overhangs and window sills. For the railings I use a border effect layer. I draw using white and make the border color black to imitate line art. Keep in mind that the layer will have to be colored separately. Once the structure of the building is finished, it's time to draw some objects. You can draw anything you'd like, but my go-tos are AC units, hanging clothes, plants and signs. For plants I also use border effect layers and use downloaded brushes. Line art might seem busy, but everything will be more clear once colored.
time to start coloring. Pick a base color and fill out the shape of the building, also coloring the border effect layers with it. I use the same color set to multiply mode over the character to make it match the environment. We add a gradient and make the top lighter to simulate lighting. Next I draw a shadow to enhance the lighting. I make a layer set to multiply mode and color with a light pink. I prefer using colors for shading other than pure grey because it makes the drawing look more saturated and less washed out. With shading city backgrounds I think less about the light source and more on how to emphasize the dimension, the structure of the buildings. I add shadows in the balconies but make the objects on the middle top to make them stand out. Next I start adding the flat colors. I do this by creating a layer clip to the base color layer and set it to overlay mode. Sometimes I use multiply mode if the base color is light and I want the flat colors to be darker. When coloring the background I like to use limited color palettes and make sure the color scheme is cohesive with the character. When creating a color scheme I want most of the drawing to be neutral and have two or three accent colors. Here I use blue and yellow to match the character. I like to use lighting to make the character stand out from the background. Finishing flat coloring, I create another shading layer. I make another layer clipping to the colors layer, set to multiply mode and reinforce the shadows. I like to add a gradient to objects to make them look more three-dimensional. I prefer coloring windows after shading. Use a light slightly blue color and then add much darker shading.
Last thing I like to add is some texture on the walls. I ended up making the shadows a bit darker. And that's pretty much the entire process. The mechanics are very simple, we just need a lot of time and patience. Hope this video is helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please give me suggestions for more background tutorials in the future. Thank you for watching and see you!